Hello and welcome back. I'm Kristen Caetano, business mentor for Coaches and Healers. And I am excited because we have a very special guest today, George Cow, who uh, I'm just going to let him speak for himself and do his own introduction because he has so much wisdom to offer us. So without further ado, George, I would love to have you share a little bit about your story and how you arrived. Yeah. Work. Well, thank you so much, Kristen, for for inviting me here. And uh, it's always a, it's a joy to talk about authentic business <laughs> with everyone. Um, I bet there are a lot of people watching this who would love to, of course, have a successful business um, financially, but also to have it be aligned with their soul's calling and uh, for a daily sense of joy and fulfillment in, in what they're doing in their business. So that's really my mission. And the reason I came to it, I mean, really, even early on in life, I looked at my, I looked at the adults in my life and I said, you know, notice a lot of adults don't really work with joy. I don't know why I just had this intuition that that was possible. Uh, and, and I noticed that that wasn't the case most of the time, um, chasing money, you know, like doing it because they have to rather than because they deeply love it. And so, um, just all throughout school, I questioned the, like, why do we need to learn this mathematical formula? Like, when are we gonna, ever going to use it? Like I always was wondering about the purpose of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that moved me really just throughout my life. and. Um, and then, you know, basically went to school and then at graduate school, I got a business degree, uh, master's in business from like a sustainable business um, a graduate program. And um, but, you know, and then afterwards, I was still saying, gosh, does it like this, this being in, like does purposeful business have to be about the environment or about social justice or whatever? And maybe, maybe not for, for some people, certainly, you know, if they have the skill set, they have the the passion and the knowledge, of course. Um, but all of us can carve out an authentic business, even with particular personal skills that we have, or people can become life coaches or, you know, healers or whatever it may be, um, using whatever they've learned. And so I kind of got into this passion for learning about this. And then my friends started asking me to teach them uh, this is back in 2008, 2009, like, hey, can you can you teach us how to use social media? You seem like you know how to use it professionally. And I started teaching my friends how to do social media well. And um, they, once one of them says, hey, maybe you should teach this. You're really good at it. Maybe this is, maybe this is part of your calling. I'm thinking, oh, really? So, so based on the feedback that I got from the people I was just volunteer helping, um, I started to get into this business of selling social media training and uh, and then my clients asked me to teach them this other thing about business and this other thing about marketing. I said, okay, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. And then, and then just kind of blossomed out from there. So, so now I have a, I have, I have a, on my website, I have 24 courses that people can, can enroll into any time. Uh, and it's everything from, you know, how to use Instagram to Facebook ads to LinkedIn and LinkedIn ads to self-publishing. I've done five books now, self-published. I've, uh, how to do, uh, how to create courses. I've, I've done 24 of those. Um, joyful productivity is another one of those topics I love talking about, which I know we can dive into. So, um, yeah, so I've been, I've been full-time in business as a, as a solopreneur, or I like to say soulpreneur, soulpreneur, like a, um, like the, the, you know, one soul alignment with one's higher purpose. I've been doing that since 2009. So I have been around longer, I think, than most solopreneurs. And I still work every day with greater and greater. Um, every year, marketing gets easier. And that's something we can talk about too. Like if, if we do marketing authentically, marketing should get easier by the year. And, uh, and if we work with joyful productivity, we can work sustainably for decades and not burn out and not want to like retire early so we can go to the beach full time kind of thing, which is, of course, you know, it's good to rest and take self-care vacations. But it's like mm, if we are trying to just quit work as soon as possible, you know, if you can do it, great. For many of us, it, it's, it's a longer journey. And it's like if we're going to take a take a journey, you might as well enjoy the journey <laughs> along the way. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop 
to pause here and then let you ask anything you like. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I love that you just did what was interesting and what felt aligned for yourself. And then it just sort of naturally unfolded and you listened to the signs and what people were asking you. That is the best way. And I, I'm excited to dive in because I can, you've been doing this a long time and a lot of people quit and a lot of people get burnt out. And so you've obviously discovered some magical unicorn formula, or maybe it's not a formula. Maybe it's a way of being, we'll find out. Um, but I'm really excited to hear your insights about how it keeps getting better. And so, yeah. oh, go ahead, if you want to. Well, no, I mean, so I, I was saying earlier, like authentic marketing, if it's done well, if it's done authentically and done consistently, does, I, I mean, I'm grateful that since 2000, because I was, I started out with a bunch of peers that, that I met in that time frame who has long since quit their business. Um, they've gone back to corporate, which is fine, or they, wh whatever they, um, some of them, you know, make, I guess made enough of a small, you know, small fortune to retire early, you know, um, move to a cheaper place and just, you know, whatever. I, we, I haven't heard from them since I haven't, their online presence is, is, uh, just passive or there's not, not active anymore. And it's like, I still remember, you know, back then, like we, we all talked the big game of. Oh, we're here to change the world and we're, you know, we have, we're mission driven business and all that stuff. And like, you couldn't last, you couldn't last 10 years. It's like, really? It's like your mission was completed in 10 years. The world has, the world is now, uh, your, your full, you know, has fulfilled your vision. Really? Um, I, I'm not saying, uh, I, it's not easy. That's why most people can't sustain for very long. And so authentic marketing and joyful productivity are sort of like my, my two guiding lights. And authentic marketing, why does it make marketing easier is because with authentic marketing, we bring as much of the fullness of ourselves into our content creation, into our offer creation, into our enrollment as possible, such that um, we're, first of all, we're in it for the long game. I'm in it for the long game. I, I tell people, listen, I'm going to, I hope I can still do this for another 20, 30 years because I, I want to, and I, I hope you'll still find me in 20 or 30 years. Because marketing to me is the process of a business finding its calling. Mm, I love that. And it's so it's marketing is not like, let me get myself perfect. And all my, you know, messaging is branding is like amazing. And then I'll get out there and then suddenly people will line up and want to work with me. That's a typical fantasy. And I get it. People pay thousands, tens of thousands to branding experts and copywriters and designers and, you know, funnel coaches or whatever to, to get that stuff in. And I, I've seen this. I've seen my clients before they came to me spend all that money and then they still haven't gotten it to work. I'm like, because at some point during the let me get myself perfect, polished process, it starts getting inauthentic because it starts like, well, you know, my copywriter says that we should go this way or, and my funnel coach says we should do. I'm like, but yeah, but is that how you want to treat um, your future friends? I mean, I think of authentic marketing as like making friends at scale. Now, not every single person in my audience is like a friend, literally, but I'm friendly with them. They see me like a friend because I, they see me you know, on a consistent basis on video and, and I'm always serving them as much as I can through the content. So, so when I say authentic marketing is like, it's like a pro the process of a business finding its calling. What I mean is, to me, marketing is not, I am polished and here I am in front of you. No, marketing is, here's what's true for me now and perhaps what's true for me in this moment. I, I'm going to share this not only because it's true for me, but I believe it's going to be of resonance to somebody out there. And let me share humbly with curiosity about what the results might be or might not be. And then I put it out there and it's like, oh, okay. There was no reaction. Okay, no, no worries. Or uh, let, me, let me try sharing another thing. And that's why the consistency is so important because it's like not every piece of, you know, and I know like all of us who create content, not every piece of content you put out there is going to go viral. Or is, if you have any expectation of it supposed to get this many reactions or this many views, well, gosh, you're going to burn out pretty fast. 
because the, the attachment creates a lot of energetic, well, binding that, that creates, um, yeah, stress, pressure, et cetera. So I like to say we are doing a series of experimentations where we are trying to find the intersection between inner exploration and outer surface. Inner exploration, it's like, this is true for me today, or this is true for my, about my story. This is true for what I'm really passionate about that I think will be helpful. And outer service, I mean, it actually served people. And have people felt it was resonant. The story was meaningful. Uh, the, the teaching was, you know, enlightening or whatever it is. That's the intersection of these two circles, inner exploration, outer service. That intersection is always what we're trying to look for. And by consistently putting content out there, we find the intersection bit by bit by bit because sometimes we put something out there and that's obvious to us, but it's amazing to other people. And we're like, really? Really? You thought that was amazing? Because that was so obvious to me or that was just kind of off the cuff. And sometimes we spend dozens of hours you know, creating a piece of content and like people don't get it because we got, we got too attached to this idea that we have before we tested it in the market. So, so authentic marketing, if we, if we keep seeing it in this light way of, of inner exploration, outer service, and just keep on experimenting, inevitably, you're going to come across certain gems that you put out there. You're like, oh my gosh, people really resonate with that. Let me lean into that area even more, which then leads us into our offerings, which is like, oh, people really like when I talk about this or when I post about this. Guess what? I'm going to put together a program, a service, a, an event, a product, because I'm... If I've already tested it several times with, with, you know, every single time I put out a piece of content, it's like a focus group. It's like a little tiny focus group every time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's authentic marketing and makes marketing easier and easier over the years because we get into this, we, we build our muscles of testing and we also build this true audience around us who have witnessed our journey over the years. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll just pause there and see if you want to ask nope. anything else. There are so many gems in there, George. I'm like, what? How? I feel like I could go five directions with that. I just want to comment. One thing I really heard and felt from you um, as you were sharing was that you're, you're really um, paying attention and being yeah. present. And I love the idea of your business finding its calling. And I, I believe that our businesses have us and our businesses exchange medicine with each other. That's how yes. I, I name it. And um, yeah. Every, that inner and outer picture that you gave was also super valuable. But here's what I want to ask. So kind of a two-part question. Um, as you know, people get discouraged and they don't want to yes. be, you know, expose themselves or they don't want to make mistakes or they put something out there that actually is good, but they have crickets just because they don't, you know, people didn't see it or whatever. And so the first part of the question is, how do, how have you personally been able to cultivate that trust for yourself, like, okay, I put something out there and I got crickets for like the trust in like following the breadcrumbs. And what would you, you know, ever a lot of most, almost everyone deals with the mindset stuff. So what kind of advice would, is if there's anything practical you could give? Oh, man. Absolutely. That's such a, an important uh, um, principle of trust. And I mean, in authentic marketing, we are becoming trustworthy to our audience, right? And being trustworthy, I think, really begins with self-trust, begins with, in, with integrity, begins with practices that make us feel um, like we are on the right path and that we are um, showing up even when things are not easy. And the more we can do that, the more self-trust we build. But, but your, your question is a, is, a, is a deep one, which is, yeah, those times when it is hard, um, how do we have the trust in, for example, the universe or the trust in our higher selves or the trust in the process that, okay, I'm going to show up again, even though last time I showed up, it didn't work. Um, I'm going to show up again today um, because somehow I trust the process. Um, well, one, I think it actually is quite helpful to be in community as we do this. You know, um, because it doesn't, solopreneur, the, the beauty of it is we get to determine our destiny. We have more autonomy here than we do if we work the job. But the danger is the solo part where, you know, 
right? And so it's like any kind of, you know, all of you watching this, you're in Kristen's community, right? Precious place to be, right? Like you, you need to lean into the community that you trust, um, that uh, has your back and that you have their back and um, share about your difficulties, share about your wins as well and share what you're learning. Because all that, all that creates a sense of, um, because in a community, um, ho hopefully not everyone is depressed at the same time, <laughs> but, but it's like some, some days, um, you know, you're doing better and I need some, some support. And in other days I happen to have some, have some luck and I can support you. And so I, I think number one, I want to, I want to say, um, you know, if you, if you get one message out of this, please. Uh, lean into the community that that's in front of you that you that you enjoy um, and and not not just a community like Kristen's for example but you yourself are building a community of people and you have to understand this like like sometimes when we uh, get discouraged is because we put something out there and we expect gosh I how come I only got three likes you know or how come I got one like or whatever but it's like you still got one like you still got three likes. And in the past, who else, who else had liked or commented on your thing? Like, don't take them for granted. Like in the beginning, we actually need to care for our few fans. Like if we actually try to get in touch with them and have conversations of genuine curiosity and care, not, hey, now that I've got you on the phone, uh, I mean, let me tell you about my, my coaching program or whatever it is I'm trying to sell you. It's like, hey, I'm so thank you for agreeing to meet with me because I, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn more about my audience and you are a representative of my audience. So I, I'm going to ask you, can I ask you a couple of questions to kind of get to know you better? And so like the more we can get to know our at first small audience as human beings that have their passions, their dreams, their um, insecurities, their... Um, uh, you know, trauma, their failures, uh, their, their needs and wants that, that some of which we can, we are actually quite eager to support people like them. The more we can actually hear that from another human being, the more we feel connected to our, our own community. And the more when we show up, we think of that one person we just talked to, like today, last week, whatever, last month even, the person we just talked to, like we are creating for them. And we're, we're, we're trusting that if we create for that person in mind, and we're not going to name their name or, or anything personal identifying about them, but we create with, with their wants and needs, their heart, you know, in our, in our mind, then whatever we create tends to resonate with not only them, but someone like them. And we could even send it to them to say, hey, um, I want to just thank you so much for the conversation we had because I created this video or this blog post or or this offer even um, with, with, with our conversation in mind. And I'd be happy to receive your feedback if you have any, or um, thank you again. And uh, yeah, anyway, if you have any other requests, right? Let me know. So, so the, the, the trust, I think, ideally would be based on community uh, support. Um, but at, in, in, in the times when we don't, can't instantly access community support, then we need to lean on our own practices of self-regulation, uh, emotional regulation, um, hugely important uh, for, for solopreneurs. So whatever practices you, I mean, all of you, I want to ask you, do you want to comment below this video? Um, what practice of resourcing your, your self-trust do you have? Uh, I, for me, I have a practice I call the energy reboot, which is a core part of my joyful productivity system. But you can just go and Google Energy Reboot. And usually Google knows my, my videos about this, but you can Google Energy Reboot George Cow. You will see I have several videos about it um, that will teach you the whole system, uh, blog posts about it. In fact, I already have developed Energy Reboot 1, 2, and 3, which is like three separate stages. And they're all blog posts that are available online you can find. So that's how I uh, continue to resource the self-trust on a daily basis, uh, while at the same time building and, and leaning into community for that external 
uh, source of trust as well. So I think my, my nervous system feels calm just being with you here, George. <laughs> but it's funny because like earlier this afternoon, I was, I did some jumping and shaking and lion's pose, you know, like some yeah. you just kind of like stick your tongue yeah. out. Like, oh, exactly. Growling around the house and sometimes like <laughs> videos. And, um, but, you know, so a couple things here. And everything you said is so wise. And I also tell my clients, like, you know, one post is not going to cut it. You got to like keep going. If so nobody commented on the one post, like you can't take that so personally. But I think when people get into my experience, I've been in the coaching industry for quite some time and business coaching for about not almost nine years. And so my experience is, um, you know, people get into this, they don't realize that, that they're going to have to be intimate and relational and uh, receive for I'm a recovery lone wolf myself. So so some of that um, and, you know, a introvert, more of an ambivert now, but, you know, so yeah. all of these things, not to put you know, the labels aren't important, but it gives a sense of like, I think people partly struggle because of this intimacy piece and uh, and that's, and you're saying to lean into community and that really takes time for people to cultivate and to feel safe and to heal whatever. Um, but I want to, this kind of gets to my next question, George, is there might be a two-part question again. I can't help myself, but so, okay, two things. So I, I'm always, my feeds are all full of the coaching industry and, you know, I notice trends and things and it does seem as though, especially the past year and a half or two, lots of pivoting, lots of people changing course, changing their niche, what, what have you. So there's that piece, um, that I'm always like keeping a pulse on, but then I also know that you shared, um, on your website that, you know, before you had your spiritual awakening and started doing authentic marketing, you were doing more traditional bro marketing, we call it. And then you were really upset that people weren't getting results, right? People weren't implementing. And so I've definitely had that experience too, when I felt like I was doing everything possible to help the person. So the parts are like, okay, when, when is it that they, it just takes as long as it takes? When is it good to pivot? And, um, yeah, anything to say about that piece? Cause, because now it's different. I, I'm here, I'm imagining. What yeah. You- yeah. Uh, thank you so much for, for asking about that. You know, so, so it's essentially those of you who are service providers will notice that, um, there are certain clients you work with, as you work with more clients, you'll find this to be more and more true. There are certain clients you work with that are easier um, than other clients. Um, certain clients are just more inclined and eager to apply the things that you recommend uh, and, and like stay in the work. And other clients are, are more resistant. Um, they, they are more, you know, they, 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 they take longer than, than you'd like. Um, and sometimes that's okay. And other times that could be discouraging to the, to the coach or to the mentor or to the healer or to the service provider. And I think it's important to notice, um, those patterns, uh, if you can, if you can like start to write down, um, mm, I've noticed, uh, this client and that client, they, they, they seem to be easier to work with. What are the similarities between them? What are the issues they came to me for? And what kinds of uh, things do I tell them that they are most eager to do? Like, it is important to notice those. And then these clients over here, hmm, it's, it's really hard to get them to, to, to do anything that I mentioned. And um, what are their similarities? <clears throat> and so, yeah, over the years, I have noticed that. Um, and you, you mentioned that it, it is, there's, it seems to be coincident, uh, co- coinciding with sort of my transition into authentic business, authentic marketing from their early days. Although I'm not, I think there's some of that. Like, yes, I tend to draw because of, I put my values very, very much forefront into all of my content and marketing. Because of that now, I tend to draw people who are more deeply resonant with me. And so they're more ready to try the stuff that I recommend. Um, whereas before, you know, maybe I sounded like other people. And so they're like, oh, I've heard this before or, or whatever. And like, oh, uh, you know, so then there was less of an intimacy 
you know, of, of deep sharing of heart that maybe there was more resistance to implementing. So, so there is something like that, but there's also just based on experience of working with more people, you notice what seems to, and then you, you almost naturally, once you notice the patterns, you'll, you'll just naturally lean more into these types of people and naturally kind of market less to those types of people. One more thing I'll say though, uh, Kristen, and this, I would truly hope it's helpful for all of you who are service providers, teachers, facilitators. Over the years, I've also learned to lean back more in my relationship to my clients. Meaning I used to be leaning forward metaphorically a lot going, okay, we're going to do this in three months. And, and here, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this and, and update me like every day, if you have to, like, I want to hear, like, like, I felt like I had to like live with them almost to get them to do anything. Like I felt like it was such a responsibility that they signed up for this and they better get results or, or, or it's my fault actually. Right. Um, and over the years, I, as I've started seeing patterns of people, I'm like, oh, s s these people over here, whatever, like I, I, I have the same energy as these people over here, but how come they're so much more, you know, eager and like reaching out to me for questions and showing me uh, the wins and all that stuff. And the, so it's, it's, it is a, it is a matter of like, oh, if I lean back, still these people get the same. And so it's it, over time. It's so, it's so interesting. I, I found myself saying this recently, Kristen, this, is, this might be quite ironic given that we're here at the Better World, uh, you know, symposium better business, better world. Um, I kind of want to make less impact going forward. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, what? What do you mean? I'm going? You want to make more impact? No, no, hear me out. Like, I am actually concerned about making too much of an impact on any one person. Like, I don't mind as much making little impact on more people. And, but I'm, I'm more concerned if I am leaning in so much as to make such a deep impact. Like I can say, I said this and I did this and therefore this, you did that and you got this result or whatever. Well, number one, it's probably not true. <laughs> like, like I said, different people have different results and, and they probably would have done it anyway. And maybe with my guidance and support, they maybe did it a little easier or they did it in a certain different way or whatever. And the other thing is like, I've noticed when I leaned in a lot more and like clients would often say, still to this day, from the beginning until now, George, just tell me what to do. <laughs> just tell me what to do on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. and a Thursday at 4 p.m. Like if you just give me, my, give me my schedule and tell me exactly what to do, I will do it. And I'm like, well, first of all, do, are you a robot? I didn't, I, I thought you were a human being. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna program you to go and just, now yeah, I'm gonna do this now, you know, <laughs> like, nowadays, especially with AI, no. So human sovereignty is so paramount. Like, and for, especially for the transformation of each individual, like the more they, they, they see themselves as transformed because of their own decisions and their own growing of their own muscles, the more deep pride they have, the more self-trust they have. And that's what I want for them. I don't want to, to for them to go, George, it was all of you. I, you, I, you, you told me this. I did that. What's next? I'm like, what's next is to, to grow up, right? To become a mature adult where you get to decide and you decide what's right or wrong. I'm still going to keep talking, <laughs> you know, but I want you to go, George, I like what you said about that. I'm going to do it my way now. I don't like what you said about that. Maybe that's for other people. I'm not going to do that. I'm like, great. Like, I like rebels. I want you to rebel if I'm saying something that doesn't resonate with you. I want you to tell me. And I, and I, anyway, so, so over the years, I've learned leaning back, number one, is more sustainable for me. And it's also more powerful for my clients as well. Because <laughs> you're, you're empowering them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I love the way you, the leaning back is important. And that's a lesson I also had to learn is um, I used to, in the beginning, like, feel so responsible. Yes. For, because I, I feel happily. Get real. They pay you money, right? It's like you you think, oh gosh, well they I, they better get their money's worth, uh, and and then it's like we 
we we define what money's worth is by like, well, how much sales did you make or whatever? But it's like for for our clients, they typically go, wow, the the actual growth was so much deeper and more valuable than just how much sales happened or whatever, which is obviously important as well. But but yeah, I'm sorry, you were saying. Yeah, no, it's it's this is all really, really juicy and um you know, as I said, very wise. And I've come to understand, like, actually, I can't get my clients the results. They have to get their own results. And just yeah. they're sovereign beings, just like you said. But that can be tricky. And then when you're trying to authentically market, I mean, the marketplace does respond to numbers and, like, results. And so it's kind of like this this tricky balance. And, um, yeah, I, I just wonder, um, you know, I've had the experience, too, of, and so I come to understand that people also have their own timeline. Yeah. Oh, for so, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I've definitely worked with people which like when they hired me, I thought like, okay, yes, I, I feel that I can help this person. So I'm going to, we're going to have this exchange and I'm taking their money and whatever. And then it, they weren't able to implement or whatnot. But I've literally had at least, I don't know, certainly a number of clients come back two or three or even four years later and be like, sure. oh, Kristen. I wasn't, now I get it. I wasn't ready then, but then since then, so I've had to, you know, and, and I'm interviewing other people for the summit that are maybe working on environmental impact or social justice yeah. and it's a wide range, but it's, we have to examine our own reasons for why we want to make impact. Yeah. And there's a kind of a fine nuance here. Uh, yeah. For yeah. how, to, how to like, we, there's some innate thing we want to make a positive, put our gifts, you know, just do something sure. like positive energy juju on the planet, but then we yeah. don't want to come from this entitled or ego at plenty. So it's quite tricky. Um, we don't want we we don't we want to be careful not to become too controlling of other humans, or in some ways even of the environment, you know, or of society. Well, it's like work. doesn't work anyway. It's the, be the, the belief, right? Like utopianism is dangerous. Um, I mean, utopia visions are beautiful. Uh, the, the more be the, the, our, the world, the more beautiful world our hearts long for. And at the same time, the more we try to control all the facts, believe we can control all the factors. Uh, like, let me set aside changing the world, but in our clients' lives. <laughs> We didn't even see the fact that suddenly their parents needed caretaking. Like we, like that wasn't part of our initial conversations, right? Or we didn't see, so, so they, they got their heart broken in a relationship and they're like, well, now I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I just need self-care for the next three to six, you know, like, or, or, or something really good happened. And it's like, they got some opportunity and we're like, whoa, like we couldn't envision that. Now we have to pivot our strategy. So it's like, it's like, we, yeah, we still there. So I, I tell people, I never, I try not to, uh, I, I, please correct me if, if you see me doing this, but I try to never promise results anymore. My marketing becomes so different now compared to other people in my industry, which many of my peers do promise results like six figure, seven figure, you know, you do this in this many days, you know, look at this person and look at this client and testimonial. And I'm all, often going like, I've been in industry long enough to know that 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 client testimonial you're using is probably like less than 1% of your clients, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, they might have done it anyway without your, oh, right? Like they were just on the verge of some breakthrough and it, you just happen to take the credit, right? Kind of thing. So I'm like, I don't promise results anymore. What I do promise is my care, my structure, my community, my content. And it's like, that's what I promise. And I, I hope that I can also promise more um, empowerment for my clients that after working with me, they feel like, oh my gosh, even if I don't work with George again, I am more capable going forward of determining my own destiny. Absolutely. I think as coaches, guides, teachers, whatnot, we have to take solace in the fact that we're playing a role somewhere on that other human stepping stone of their journey. And if they get results four years later or never or whatever, that's, we, we have to like um, have that, cultivate that inner trust and uh, comfort, solace for that. Uh, so, so all this, this is, all, I feel like we could, I can spend like, you know, a whole day with you, George, but I want to um, get a snapshot. So given this frame of authentic marketing, 
and really just showing up and being yourself and being helpful, um, being in integrity. What would be like just a snapshot of how to succeed? You've got your kind of, mm-hmm. you know, okay, people, yes, yes. whether they're just starting out or maybe they're starting a new venture, especially in this climate, because as you and I both know, a lot has changed in this industry. So what's your snapshot? What's your, what's your snazzy formula? You got some code for it? You know, uh, so formula, yes. I, uh, well, as, as I mentioned, I, you know, I always say, you know, no one can guarantee you success. But if I were to try, <laughs> okay, this is my best shot at it. I call it my 111 formula. 111, uh, well, part of it is because I've, I've always enjoyed seeing uh, re- re- repeating ones. I always had some special place in my, in my heart and my consciousness, whether or not it's really like God winks or just, you know, my particular activation system in my brain, whatever. It always makes me happy to see it. And so I'm like, I- I'm going to come up with a formula that, <laughs> that tries to help others succeed uh, totally on them. But, but let, let me just talk you through it very, very briefly. Um, so 111 is uh, made up of a series of components that add up to 111, 111. Um, it, I'll just share with you briefly the components and you can ask me anything you want. Uh, one of them is 40 content experiments, okay? And, and 111 formula can be applied as a one-year business plan or however long you want, three-year, two-year, or six-month business plan, as you, as you might. So 40 content experiments, meaning uh, earlier I said, you know, um, cont- authentic marketing is, is like a business trying to find its calling and the process often is through content creation. And so these experiments are simply, well, you can take it lightly to say, all right, let me try sharing this idea today. Let me try sharing this idea today. Oh, I'm going to try sharing the same idea I shared you know, three months ago, but in a different way now or in a different format. And so the, it's like every time you show up to create content, think of it, treat it as an experiment of inner exploration, outer service, um, and, and try to do a little something different um, rather than just stay static and stuck in the same routine. Try to shake it up a little bit, just a little bit, you know, and like whether you try a slightly different video format or um, different introduction or a different um, way to bring people into the article or a different way of telling the story, whatever, you know, a different way of framing in a concept that people already understand. You're experimenting. 40 content experiments. Okay, that's one. Um, another component would be 10 pieces of stage two content. What's stage two content? For those who don't know my three stages of content creation, you can Google that and you'll find it. Three stages of content creation. Stage two content basically is taking the best of your 40 experiments over time. Don't, don't like wait until you're done with all 40, but like maybe every four or every eight pieces of content you put out there as experimentation. Look at the stats for those four or for those eight and whichever one of them got above average likes, above average reactions and engagement, that's the market telling you something. So take the one that got above average and improve it a little bit and then distribute that piece of content even further. So you, you, you started by posting on LinkedIn. Okay, that thing, got, oh, okay, that thing got, this particular piece got more traction. Well, let me post it elsewhere. Post it on Instagram or, or Facebook or or. Twitter or TikTok or, or YouTube or whatever, whatever you, or since put it on your blog. So 10 pieces of stage two content, meaning take the best of stage one and then improve it a bit, redistribute it further. Another component. So now we've got up to 50 now. Uh, next component is 20 market research conversations, 20 market research conversations. And the market research conversation is having a one-on-one, it could be in small group, but let's just say one-on-one dialogue with someone who has been engaging with your social media, someone who's been liking it, someone who's been commenting on it, or it can be one of your friends who can channel your ideal client. Like they know your ideal client type of person real well, and you want to talk to your friend about it. That's great too. But the market research conversation essentially is trying to discover the wants of your market, meaning the types of people that you're trying to reach that you think might want to buy your stuff. Um, Or I'll just say this. Your market begins with the people you can reach. But the people you can already reach, by definition, is your market. Or the question is, what are they spending money on? Because it's their, expe- their spending, the, the spending of the people you can reach is your market. The spending of the people you can reach is your income. That's where your income comes from. 
And so the conversation essentially tries to understand what are they spending money on that's related to what you do, or if, they're, if, they, could, if they could imagine a, an ideal service or package or program or product for them related to what you do that they want, what would that look like? Okay, so that's 20 market research conversations. Next one is 20 collaborations, like what we're doing here. So you can, you can chalk this up as one of your 20. Um, so a co collaboration is as simple as you interviewing someone that you want to uh, get to know better, to have them share some, something that, some stories or wisdom for your audience, and you want to ask them some questions. Simple as that. It could be that. Or it could be like co-teaching, or it could be like, um, you know, your, your product is, is you, have a, you, have a, you have a small product that you want to put as a bonus of one of their packages or products. Collabs come in all forms. 20 of them. Start with friends, of course. And then next component is 10 gentle launches. 10 gentle launches, which is basically 10 offers you make to your audience to say, hey, here's one way I talk about my service. Here's one of my services, or here's one of the packaging of my services. Would you like to buy? And the gentle launch is as opposed to an intense launch where it's like, here are 17 emails I'm going to send out. <laughs> And then five webinars, I'm going to, you know, no, two emails, one, two emails, whatever those two emails are for any gentle launch. For example, when I'm launching a course, the two emails are, here's the pre-launch discount for the course, brief description. If you want to buy it at a discount before the sales page is ready, you can. And then the second message is, hey, it starts next week. And the sales page is ready. Go check it out. But it's, it's, it's two emails, two messages. And those two emails or messages are posted wherever you're on social media. Those two emails can be creative, however you want it. But it's two is not too much. That's what I like to say. Two messages to announce something is not too much. And then final two components, six practices of joyful productivity integrated. Um, later after this call, I can send you a list of the joyful productivity practices. I have 26 of them. <laughs> but uh, I just ask people, hey, implement one every two months. So six practices integrated in a year is better than what most people do are just flailing around. They have no productivity method or system to wrangle their ideas, the overwhelm of data coming at them, wrangle their time, their, um, uh, manage their energy, uh, da, 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 da. Okay. And then finally, five client case studies. A case study is simply, think of it as before, during, and after. Before a client started working with you, what was the presenting issue? What did they come to you about? What, was, what, what, did, what motivated them to, to work with you? During working with you, what was their favorite parts of working with you? And then after they work with you, how has, how is their life different? How is their health different or their relationship different or whatever you help people with? What, what's, what's different? So anyway, if you add up all those numbers, it comes out to 111. And I'm like, listen, if you do these 111 things, I can't see how you couldn't succeed like, like it's, it's nearly guaranteed um obviously it's all depends on how each person executes them um but it's like that's if you do these things you're going to be way better off in my opinion than than someone who doesn't so hope that helps but this is just so much value i'm literally taking notes even though you have, <laughs> and i'm looking forward to getting you know i'm going to dive deeper on your doing but productivity on your site and everything yeah. i would tell you that the concept of a gentle launch is like I don't know, because I'm someone yeah. that has done um, a number of non-gentle lessons. And I'm also, okay. some, you know, to me, fully transparent, I've struggled with, um, and some of those were successful. A lot of those were successful, but then I got kind of fried, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and, I've, I've, I've been there. Surely. <laughs> and then, and I also, I mean, I've taken a, I'm, I've taken a big break on social media recently, and that may or may not be good or bad, but. The point is, I, I think it's a very human to struggle, but you, you're, you're, by the way, you're, you, once you take a break, the first message at least, or the first two messages, social media is going to give you an extra algorithmic bump. Yeah. Kind of welcome you back. So sometimes it's not bad to take a break because you get this yeah. kind of algorithmic bump when you Yeah, I mean, mine was more of a, you know, I'm going to take, let me just go within for a moment. <laughs> sure. Of course. Um, yeah, it's of true. Course. Understand. It's true. We got to, you know, algorithm help. But, you know, it's not such a bad thing. It could be our friend. Yeah. Fine. This is a lot of value. Thank you so much, George. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely.
I cannot let you get off of this call without finding out you shared that you are a tea lover and I'm also a bit of a tea junkie. So I've got to know, this is probably part of your practicing, but what is your type of tea? It's funny that you asked this because I've actually, I haven't been drinking tea for a while. So whatever you saw from me was, was probably a while ago when I, when I said that comment. Um, these days, I, it's funny. These days, I, by the way, I moved to Mexico last year. And one of the drinks that I could never, never knew about, I mean, it, it was, it's like, it was always, a, these ingredients were always available, but like, I never thought to put them together. It's like, um, fruit juice and mineral water. It's so popular here. It's called Agua Fresca here in Mexico. Yeah. 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 And, and like, I, as an American, I was oblivious to it. Like I, for some reason, like you would always get just juice by itself or some people would get mineral water, which always was really weird to me. Like, why would you drink water that made you hiccup? <laughs> it's like that, that tasted like nothing. And it's like, no, and now you put them together and it's like, oh, brilliant. Um, so that's what I've been drinking here in Mexico more. And, uh, but in terms of tea, um, gosh, I, I used to have several teas that I would make my go-tos. I'm trying to remember. Yerba Buena, I was really into for a long time. Um, what was another one? I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably, and usually when I go to a restaurant, right, they only have a few options. So I, I usually, if they have like, um, some kind of like black tea, I like that or oolong or uh, jasmine, those kinds, you know, I tend to go with that. How about you? Nice. I love them all. Well, um, I'm definitely, I like Pu'er and. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I, that would be one of my go-tos as well. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I basically like all of them, but, you know, Pu'er and um, like the jasmine, the pearls are pretty. Yes, nice. yes, yes, yes. And um, I like the, like some of the Japanese teas, like the hojicha mm. and um, of course. What, what's it called? Hojicha. It's like, um, it's like these, I don't even know. It's like twins, but they tea. Yeah. You can see them yeah. when they're awesome. And um, I'm actually a bit of an herbalist. And so I, one of my former companies, I had a small um, organic wellness TV company, which was really kind of a cottage side hustle thing, but I make um, blends and a couple of them. I don't do that business anymore. I decided I didn't want to do product-based businesses, but um, I still to this day make some of my custom blends for my friends. And they're, they're like, Christian, we need that. One of them's called Playful. and it, it's like for summertime because it's like the ingredients match also like a emotional wellness. Yeah. The whole thing. So anyway, I get geeky about tea, as you can see. Um, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, people are getting, people are getting, that's, that's probably the true value from this interview is like what kind of tea you drink. <laughs> Everybody go get your puetter and your, uh, your yeah. agua fresca. Yes. Uh, amazing. So tell me, um, just before we, you know, close this amazing time together, um, I'm going to share some links to your free resources that you have on your um, sure. site. Yeah. And, uh, is there anything just as you, just from your heart that you want to say or share with our viewers, any piece of advice or wisdom or whatever, anything goes, what, what, what do you want people to take away as they go out and Come. Yeah, I guess, I guess the final piece, I mean, this is sort of like the, like, if I could say one thing, you know, like before I die, you know, if I could say one thing, I, I would say that somehow, magically, mysteriously, life's got your back and you will, you will not miss your destiny for this life, no matter how much you've tried or failed, get back up and follow your heart's calling. Do it as consistently as you can because your higher self, um, your higher guidance is smarter, wiser, more on point than any other coach, expert, mentor can be. And uh, that's a, such a gift to each of us, you know, our higher, our, our higher guidance. So it's got your back. Life's got your back. Universe got your back. So all will be well. Yeah, all is well. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you, George. I really appreciate that. And I know oh, I'm going to... Thank gonna, you so much, I, Yeah, I'm going to re-listen to this one because you've given me a lot of inspiration personally. So I'm so grateful for your time. 
And um, we'll see you out there on the interwebs. And uh, wait, Mer- one more thing, actually, where in Mexico are you? I'm just curious because I'm-, I'm in a place called Ajijic, which is by uh, the, sec- the largest lake or the second largest lake in Mexico, Lake, lake Chapala, C-H-A-P-A-L-A. So you all can look it up on Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. I will do that because I'm a bit of a travel junkie. Okay. All right, that wraps us out. Thank you again so much for your time. It's been such a real pleasure and joy to be with you. Oh, it's been my joy. Thank you so much, Kristen. Take good care. Thanks.